This is the mausoleum which contains Kwame Nkrumah's final remains. <clears throat> and since he died, this is actually his third burial place. As I mentioned earlier on, he was our leader until 1966, 24th of February, when his government was unfortunately overthrown. And it, it may interest you or may not surprise you to know that the whole coup was actually, we found out later, was funded by the American CIA. So go figure. he had to go into exile in Conakry, Guinea, where he was accepted wholeheartedly by the then Guinean leader called Sekuture. So eventually he made him his co-president. Never happened before anywhere in the world. That is why he lived until 1971. He fell sick. He was taken to Bucharest, Romania, for his medical treatment, where he eventually passed of prostate cancer in 72 at the age of 63. So his body was eventually embalmed and then taken back to Guinea, where he was given a state funeral and burial as co president. But three months later, they moved his body back to his family house in Ghana. He was born in the southwestern part of Ghana, a town called Nkrofo. They moved him back because at the time he died, unfortunately his mother was still alive. And he happened to be the mother's only child. So she was requesting they brought his body back home. That is why he was in the mausoleum until later, Ghanaians thought that he deserved a proper national honor for all that he went through for us and the African continent at large. So this place was built in 1991 by our then leader called Jerry John Rawlings. So when he finished it, he was then transferred from his family house to here. So this is his third and hopefully the final resting place. It is built of Italian marbles, but the architect is a Ghanaian. So we believe he is now resting while he's been buried here. And we have the water and fountains around because there's a saying and belief that water is life. So though he's dead, we believe that his visions, his ideas, his wish for us are still relevant today. So some people would say, Kwame Chroma never dies. Today, as I said earlier on, is African Union Day. He was one of the champion of that particular movement and eventually made sure it was formed on 25th of May, 1965, in 63, in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa. So, to give a more practical expression about African unity, he married an African. His wife was an Egyptian called Fatia Nkrumah. She died just in 2007, back home in Egypt. But not long after her death, the news came from their children that on her sick bed, her utmost wish was to be buried by her husband. So that request was put across to the then government. It was agreed eventually after a lot of discussions. So they brought her back, gave her also a state funeral, and eventually a space was created around to also contain her. So she is very right on that. So we can go that way. She's very right there. So from here we go to the right hand side.